Welcome to the SEC game of the week, at least according to me, and that is the number three Texas Longhorns versus the number 10 Michigan Wolverines. A game in which two teams that couldn't be any different, in my opinion. You've got Texas, uh, who has a Heisman hopeful QB who likes to throw it all over the field. Uh, they're flashy. Uh, and uh, they, 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 if they look like they've got the Hollywood stars on their team, where Michigan doesn't really have a quarterback. They're control the clock, they're grind it out, they're stop the run, they're blue collar, and so it's an interesting game to watch uh, here. It'll be interesting which style wins this game. Uh, so let's talk about these two teams, okay? And guys, when I talk about this data, I only have one game to work off of as far as data. So it's kind of hard. It's not the best data. You need to probably have at least three games to kind of go off to compare strength of schedule and uh, offensive and defensive comparisons. But this is what I have to work with. So let's talk about strength of schedule. So far, both teams are 1-0. Texas has the 43rd hardest schedule after beating Colorado State. They did exactly what they were supposed to do against Colorado State. They dominated the game. Colorado State's terrible. Uh, and uh, so Texas, uh, they are 43rd uh, as far as strength of schedule. And then you have Michigan. They had the 31st hardest schedule in the country. They had a little bit tougher of an opponent that they played than Texas. Uh, they beat Fresno State 30 to 10. It was a 13-point game until uh, at the very end of the game, Will Howard had a pick six, which made it a little it look a little bit better for Michigan. Uh, but Michigan struggled. This was ugly. It was ugly penalty wise. It was ugly offensively and defensively. They should have done better against the pass, which I'll get more into. This was not a good game for Michigan. Uh, but guess what? Uh, the game's behind them, and now they're on to Texas. So. Now let's look at players to watch in this game. Uh, the first name, obviously, and he's the best player on the field, that's Quinn Ewers. Uh, he's a Heisman hopeful. He had 260 yards and three TDs last week. Uh, for Michigan, you got Colston Loveland. Uh, he is their preseason All-Big Ten guy. Uh, at tight end, he had 87 yards and a TD. He is a mismatch nightmare for uh, defenses. Uh, for Texas, you got Matthew Golden. He's one of those three receivers that uh, he's one. Uh, they're just uh, really, really good, and it's really hard to defend that many good receivers because uh, nobody has that many corners that can defend that can defend that many uh, good wide receivers. But Matthew Golden, he's a transfer from uh, Houston. He had 50 yards and two TDs in his first game as a Longhorn. Kalel Mullings, he's a veteran at Michigan. Uh, he got his chance. He carried the rock for 50 carries. Uh, he had 92 yards. And so he did a really good job. He was the leading rusher. That's the name to be looking out for. A name that I didn't put on here, though, is Donovan Edwards. He's their home run specialist. He had a horrible game. He averaged like two yards a carry. He had like 10 carries, and he only averaged uh, like two yards a carry. He had like 20 yards rushing. So. Uh, that's another game, maybe honorable mention, that we need to be uh, looking out for in this game is Donovan Edwards. T uh, Texas, Ryan Wingo, 70 yards, four receptions. He's a true freshman. He's another one of those amazing receivers Texas has. Will Johnson, he'll be the best DB on the field for either uh, team. Uh, he's the guy that had the pick six against Fresno State. Uh, really high quality, good defensive back. Uh, Isaiah Bond is the transfer from Alabama. He's a junior. He has uh, he has been through a lot of battles. He's got a lot of experience, and uh, he is the guy that caught that uh, pass for Jalen Milrow that beat Auburn as time expired. Um, and then you got for uh, Michigan Mason Graham. This guy is a is an All Big Ten preseason guy too. Uh, he had four tackles last week. They limited Fresno State to nine yards rushing. So that's kind of the ticket on how they're going to win this game. They've got to completely take away the run game from Texas uh, and then make Texas one-dimensional, and, uh, and you've got a chance. So let's talk about comparisons here. Texas offense versus Michigan defense. Total offense with one game to uh, one game down in this season. Texas is 22nd. They uh, had 445 545 yards last week. Michigan was 40th. Uh, they allowed 244 yards. Uh, scoring offense, Texas is 17th. Uh, they had 52 points. Scoring defense for Michigan is 41st. Uh, they gave up. Uh, they allowed 10 points uh, from Fresno State. Uh, rushing offense, uh, Texas is 55th. 190 yards 
and so I'll stop right there. That's pretty good for Texas. I know Colorado State's not a really good team, but if if uh, you know the one thing about Texas is they had they lost two running backs in the preseason, so they got some reserve running backs running back there. If they can get those guys going, get some confidence, and if Texas is able to really run the ball effectively with that pass game, it's going to be hard to stop Texas. Uh, rush defense for Michigan, uh, they were third in the country. They only allowed nine yards last week uh, to uh, Fresno. No state passing offense. Um, uh, Texas is 21st. They had 355 yards last week. Uh, Quinn Ewers had a really good day, and he only played into the third quarter. He did not play the whole game, or his stats would have been better. Passing defense for Michigan is 98th. They allowed 235 yards to Fresno State. Now, here's the thing: Texas is a lot better than Fresno State. There's the receivers, the quarterback, the whole nine yards. They're going to have to play a lot, lot better if they want to beat Texas. That's going to have to improve. Uh, Texas defense versus the Michigan offense. Texas total defense is 23rd. 192 yards is what they gave up last week. To, uh, Michigan total offense is 108. They only had 269 yards of total offense. That's just not good. They got to be much, much better, especially running the football. That's their identity. At least it was under Jim Harbaugh, physicality, uh, controlling the clock, uh, and extending drives through that running game, through a physical, uh, brutal run game. Um, and they didn't do that last week. Scoring defense, Texas is first. They, they didn't allow zero. They allowed zero points, and, and you can't get any better than that. Scoring offense for Michigan is 75th. Uh, they had 30 points uh, scored, but seven of that was the Will Howard interception return. So it was actually worse than that, honestly. Rush defense for Texas is 63rd. They had 118 yards that they allowed uh, last week to Colorado State. Pretty good. Uh, it could be a little bit better. That's a little suspect. That might be something that Michigan can, can uh, take advantage of uh, on Texas. Because um, if, if, if Colorado State can run for 118 yards on Texas, surely Michigan could get around 200 yards. And if they can get north of 200 yards, that's kind of the ticket to pull off the upset, in my opinion. Now let's talk about the rush offense. Michigan didn't do that great last week with the rush offense. They really uh, controlled Donovan Edwards, Fresno State did. Uh, and when he got the ball, they were set, they're 77th in the country right now after one game. They had 148 yards. Um, Passing defense for Texas is seventh. Uh, they had 74 yards uh, that they allowed last week, which is really good. They got a really good secondary. Uh, Texas does good, good secondary. Uh, so it'll be it'll be a real challenge for Michigan to be able to move the ball on that secondary. Passing offense for. Uh, uh, Michigan was 117th. They only had 121 yards, and and a lot of that is just through their tight end. Uh, if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't have had anything. Colston Loveland had 87 yards uh, out of all that offense. So they're going to have to be a lot, lot better than that if they expect to beat um, if they expect to beat Texas this week. So let's talk now about the turnover margin. One game into the year. Texas is 20th, and Michigan's both 20th. They're plus one uh, in the turnover margin. Uh, and it's always good to be plus in the turnover margin. So both have a good start on that. Uh, penalties, Texas had a good game last week. They only had 25 yards worth of penalties. Michigan was sloppy, 101st right now after one game. They had 70 yards worth of penalties. That is another thing that they're going to have to clear up if they want to beat Texas. They cannot be having turnovers or they can't be having uh, penalties. Uh, they, uh, it just, you just cannot. I think Texas is clearly the better team in this game. And if you have a lot of penalties, you're just not going to win this game. You have to be, you have to play a clean, clean game. So let's talk about the prediction in this game, okay? Um, first and foremost, there is a path for Michigan to win this game. Uh, if Michigan can control the, the clock, if they can extend drives, and primarily I think that's through running the football, uh, throwing to Loveland, uh, getting some mismatches for him, uh, it, 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 you know, I think they can run. I think Michigan, Michigan can run on that Texas defense. I really do. It'll be hard to pass it, but if they can run um, – it can open up some avenues for Michigan. Um, Michigan, defensively, got a great rush defense. They've got a really great, a great front seven. If they can make Texas one-dimensional, put them in third and long situations, 
uh, where their front seven can really get after Quinn Ewers, who knows? Create turnovers, whatever. It's in Ann Arbor. It's two top ten teams. There's definitely a path for Michigan to win. But all those things being said, that's a tall order, okay? Because Texas has one of the top three quarterbacks right now in the country. Michigan don't even know what their quarterback is. Uh, they've got uh, uh, they got two quarterbacks and Warren and Orgy. One is a spread offense, run it, run it quarterback, and Warren is more of a pro style uh, quarterback. Um, and, and in my opinion, if you got a dual, if you got two quarterbacks, you don't have any at all. You got to have one quarterback. So Texas clearly has the advantage when it comes to the quarterback situation. Um, and so you got Texas has those three receivers. That's a, it's a huge mismatch. Even though you know uh, Michigan does have a good secondary, especially Will Howard back there, um, it's just going to be really hard to contain those guys. I just think that Texas has too many playmakers. They've got they definitely have the huge advantage at quarterback. I think Michigan comes out. I think they play really well. I think they're physical. I think they play with a lot more effort. And I think this is a very close game. Uh, I would not be surprised if it's a one possession game, maybe even into the fourth quarter. But I like, um, but I like uh, Texas to kind of pull away, and I like them to win by double digits. I think Texas is going to win this game, 30 to 17 over Michigan. It's a big statement game for Texas to say, hey, we are one of the big dogs in the SEC. Michigan is taking a step back this week. They they lost JJ McCarthy. They lost Corm. They lost a bunch of defensive players last year, uh, and they've lost. And they, I mean, they're just they they're down a lot of stars. They lost their head coach. Michigan's going to be okay. Texas has just got too many weapons, um, and I think Michigan will bounce back. But uh, I think in this game, it's just asking a little too much to, uh, for Michigan to win this game. Is it possible? Yes. I just don't think it'll happen. I think uh, Texas wins kind of comfortably at the end of the day. But anyway, that is my prediction uh, for uh, Texas versus Michigan. It's my SEC game of the week. And, guys, I will talk to you all later.